Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cambridge Arts Open Studios virtual program. I'm Kirsten Swartz, and I'm the Community Arts Administrator for the Cambridge Arts Council. And we're really excited to present this program to you today in partnership with CCTV. Um, Open Studios is all virtual this year. You can visit the work of over 100 artists, all local to Cambridge, on our website, which is csartcambridge.com. And there's work available there to sell and for, for all of your holiday shopping needs. And you can also see uh, the list of upcoming programs that we have with more artists, uh, more local Cambridge artists sharing their work. Today we have Roz Grunman and Shola Regna who will be sharing their artwork um, with us during this virtual program. Um, just a few more notes about the website, the csartcambridge.com. The Open Studio site will be up until December 31st through the end of the year, so please take advantage of it soon. Um, these virtual programs will be on at Tuesdays at lunchtime, 12 to 1, like this one, and Saturdays, 3 to 4. And you can see the full schedule and the list of artists participating in the programs at csartcambridge.com. Um, so today we'll be hearing from Roz Grudman and Shola Regna, as I said, and they'll be sharing their artwork and telling us a bit about their art practice. If you have any questions during the program, you can use the Q&A function to send your questions to me, and I'll make sure that the artists have the opportunity to answer your questions. Um, so thank you again to CCTV and the rest of the Cambridge Arts team. Um, and we're going to start the program today with Shola Regna. So Shola, please take it away. Hi, um, I am thrilled to be sharing uh, this time with you and uh, I wanted to uh, sort of show the kind of work that I have done over the years and it's been so many years and there's so much work, it's just like it's too much to choose from and I've sort of uh, put together a um, slideshow that uh, kind of uh, uh, shows different media and uh, work that I have done. Um, so I could I could start with that if you want, and we can kind of talk as we go. So um, I can I guess share screen, and there we go. Yes, here we go. So this is my studio, and uh, every year for open studios, I would clean up, spend one to two weeks and put everything away and set it up in such a way that I could have you know, public uh, to come in and, and, and uh, explore and ask questions. This is a um, installation, the very uh, one, it's called Time River, uh, which also has sound of running water. <clears throat> it has many, many uh, uh, rocks. Some of them are dark, you know, black uh, uh, color. Uh, solid and some of them are resin so they kind of uh, they like water and sort of death and rebirth sort of I want to kind of say that we all are stuck at this uh, on this uh, river in this river of time that uh, we we it's going by and uh, we are all in it the same uh, we are all the same my work really centers around the concept of unity among diversity that we are really all really the same and there is no reason to separate and 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 fight among ourselves the way it's been uh so far so this was a, this is a second um installation that is in my studio uh it has to do with genetics issues which i was made i made this a long long time ago maybe 20 years ago and uh, started by writing the sequence of um mm -hmm. chromosome 22 which was the first one that got decoded um, and I started writing it on this panel, the front, and uh, it's just huge, this little smallest chromosome, yet uh, it's so long uh, with its sequence. And uh, so I wanted to just sort of say that um, the opening to future where so much is going to uh, change, uh, it is uh, uh, very uh, um, kind of, um, uh, not so secure if we just go by the by the uh, marketplace, if you will, if you kind of sell the genomics, uh, the history of living kind uh, to whomever that has access to it and, and uh, having them change it. So I have on the panel that you see is kind of illuminated. It's uh, got some words written there, you know, it's, it's a um, 
talks about, uh, if I can find my notes here, uh, it's been so long, but it is uh, about uh, um, uh, choosing uh, your offspring uh, versus having having us offsprings uh, and kind of trying to um, force your aesthetics and your beliefs uh, to uh, to life and and changing it for good, which is to me extremely uh, um, unwise. And this has been this this piece is a very long piece, and I uh, still still I find it extremely uh, um, uh, you know timely. Uh, so the next one is. Let's see. Oh, this one. This one, uh, I had created all of these masks of people over the 20 years period. Uh, and um, the masks are from uh, I used to teach at uh, uh, um, Cambridge Center for Adult Ed. And I had a portrait class there. And I would always keep the mask of the sitters that I would uh, create for class. Uh, and so they have like over the years, I have collected so many people and they're all uh, in the ceiling and uh, comes from the ceiling, this DNA, uh, uh, which is, is, is reflected. All of the masks and DNA are reflected back at you in the mirror. Um, and it is a, uh, again, discusses or, or, or attempts to portray how we are all really the, the same and, and uh, even though we look different, but really we all have the same red blood and uh, it is, it is uh, commonality that I wanted to uh, feature. Uh, and then uh, I've been, since the COVID uh, hit, I've been not going to my studio very often. And uh, so when I had a chance to go, I would make very quick sketches. These are doodles that I've been making, very quick ones and I'm putting them on the Instagram and uh, they are to clear my head and give me hope because I love color. This is back again on my studio and shows the, you know, uh, the sculptures and the, uh, you know, um, other work that I've done. Portraits are one of my favorite things to do because I can really uh, um, feel someone, uh, their spirit and try to um, create it uh, uh, in, 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 in 3D. And uh, it, is, it is a joy really to, to make that connection. Um, so there is, uh, I work with clay and then I either fire it or cast it. Uh, so there is a variety of uh, outcomes. Some of them are or, or, or um, uh, this one is clay and then the next slide is the fired piece of the same uh, uh, portrait. Um, and working with different media is really nice because I guess I'm a Gemini, I can't stick one thing and I just have to always switch from one thing to another. And these are the, this, these are the quick sketches that I've been doing. Uh, uh, on not a daily basis, but weekly basis and po posting them online um, just to say that here I am, I'm still alive and, and uh, sharing it online. Um, and then there is, and then this program really cuts off everything, but if you wanna see anything. Uh, so, so I work in the variety of med media and I've been for the, for over the years, I've been painting birds and uh, these are monotypes and uh, and then I also, to make a living, I also make jewelry, uh, anything and everything that I can create because I'm a self-supporting artist and uh, it is rather hard to uh, be reliant on your, um, uh, yourself for everything. So, but I've so far been able to do it, of course, up until this year, which has been a little different. Uh, this is my um, Little Ivy, this is, a, uh, I made three consecutive uh, portraits of her as she was growing up and uh, it was just a joy, endless joy. Um, and uh, these are pieces that I have created or um, uh, still have uh, things in progress. So variety, another another commission, uh, uh, just, yeah, again, it's studio studio shot with uh, for open studios. Everything is clean and presentable. Um, yeah, the birds are important to me because they really. Um, I feel like they're a symbol of freedom to me. Uh, they can fly anywhere and land anywhere, and they don't um, seem to be bothered by borders and uh, you know nationality. They just are quite free wherever they go. Um, of course, their life is difficult too, but. Uh, there is joy in it as well. 
and sense of freedom, flight and freedom. So working with the, working with, and, and I sell my work. So uh, I present my work at craft fairs and uh, I have open studios uh, in order to directly uh, um, meet and, and uh, uh, connect with people, which is again, a huge joy because become, they become family to me and they, people collect my work and I see them uh, and, and it just gives me endless, endless happiness to see uh, they bring so much beauty by wearing my work <laughs> to the world. Um, so these are monotypes that I did uh, a long time ago again. Uh, they are, and this one is a interactive piece. Uh, I uh, had uh, made two sets of uh, forms, one for truth and one for lies. And I would ask people to make a, a form sentence uh, and and uh, some to be true, some to be lie. And anyway, I had a video, uh, audio uh, aspect to it too. Um, so this is what I've been up to. And this is, this is I guess, uh, we're done. I did run through the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, so if you have any questions, you can ask me. I can happy, happily tell you. Thank, thank you, Shola. That was wonderful and so interesting to see the real the breadth and all the different media that you work in. Um, what are some big ideas? I know you mentioned a few: the human connection, flight, and freedom for the birds. Are some there are some other big ideas that you explore through all the different media that you work in? Yeah, the installations are extremely important, uh, and they were. Um, about uh, how the conflicts are based on focusing on our, uh, uh, our, our differences and not commonality. And uh, there's so much, you know, all this genocide, all this stuff you hear, it's all about, you know, finding uh, everybody in on the other camp and, and, and finding yourself in a different one. So you kind of uh, set yourself up for, for, for uh, uh, justifying conflict and hating and, uh, and, and uh, doing all of this, uh, unfortunate things. So that's one of the things that I really like to explore further, but I've had so much time and energy focused on making a living, which uh, takes away my mind is, is, is about how to create work, photograph it, market it, <laughs> you know, uh, all of the things that one has to do. I mean, I'm a whole one person company and I have to do everything. So it's very difficult to uh, have it all uh, function smoothly and uh, uh, get somewhere, you know, and I feel like I haven't gotten anywhere because I've been mostly consumed by making a living part of it. So I'm like looking at my work, it's like, well, I have done things here like 20 years ago that are still very important and relevant. And and uh, only if I had more time to, to kind of explore more and uh, I, I wish. And the one one other one, I don't know if you saw it, there, are the, there were the organic forms that I made in my residence in Denmark, which has to do with, again, uh, the forms that are within us. These are like, um, I studied the uh, uh, skeletons of all uh, um, animals in, in Harvard Art Museum, Harvard uh, uh, Comparative Zoology, and uh, seeing how much the, no matter what species, no matter what uh, um, uh, critter you were looking at, uh, they all had the same shapes and same same things with that just keep reoccurring. So I thought, why don't why not just uh, think about these shapes and just make up a body of work that has to do with uh, things that are uh, uh, feeling uh, uh, innate and comfortable and, and representative of how what we are made of. So I made this uh, all of this uh, sculpture that I'm hoping someday to make into very big size uh, so that uh, you know, you'd be able to walk into them. I mean, huge, huge, of course. I made videos trying to get that feeling. And of course, all my videos that I've made, they're all are VHS, SVHS, and I don't have access to them now. I have to uh, transcribe them. I have to uh, do that. So that's yet yet to do on my to-do list. Um, so yeah, so these are the issues I'd like to very much pursue. So uh, what do you like about the different media that you work in? Work in clay and pastels and the installation sculptures. What, what appeals to you about each of those uh, different media? You know, I, I uh, don't think about medium as far as uh, as a limitation. I just like idea. The idea is the first uh, thing that I think about. And uh, then uh, whatever that just uh, serendipity I believe in, 
extremely important to me because you never know what is always comes in front of me out of nowhere and and I am like in it uh, so yeah I've done technology I I thought that for sure art world would go to uh, 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 technology side but it hasn't happened all that much I even got myself uh, educated to be able to do that and uh, that's my next step to get to make art totally with technology I made a robot that would draw and I uh, would like to do more uh, exploring. Uh, so that's the next, that's the next thing I would say. My, but I love clay. I love clay. I love working with clay. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, so you said that, you know, you believe in serendipity and you just have these different experiences that lead you to work. Where do you fi find inspiration? How do you find inspiration for your artwork? Well, it's just a matter of, um, uh, I mean, I love nature and when I go, to, I love learning. And when I find something new, uh, my uh, mind just uh, uh, gets into a state where I need to uh, like make things. And um, I, I really like, I'm addicted to learning. And that's one of the problems I have. <laughs> I seem to, you know, get very uh, distracted by uh, uh, one thing after another and not really staying in one course. So people come to my studio often ask, how many people work here? Because there are so many different things and uh, uh, it's all me, just me, just me and these, these hands. <laughs> yeah. yeah and, and what does it mean to you to be a working artist and to make your living this way? It's actually good and uh, limiting, but I feel like <laughs> with every limitation, there is also uh, 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 there is a uh, opportunity uh, that opens up. I mean, uh, that's what I believe, you know, even if you have failure, that could actually become uh, a seed for growth because you kind of find to have to find a way out of it and uh, new things emerge from it. So uh, there is, there is, um, yeah, so I, I'm sorry, I forgot what did you ask? <laughs> oh, I asked, that, what does it mean to you to be a working artist and what is that like? How did you get started? It's, very, of... it's very hard. I'm yeah, not yeah. younger and it's just difficult to, every year I would uh, get up, uh, in, like picking after my open studio, uh, it would be uh, all, you know, setting up my booth and 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 and, and, and very difficult to have that uh, put together and and uh, by by myself is extremely difficult nowadays more and more so. So um, it's not easy, definitely not easy. I I never have had a um, uh, somebody who to support me. So it's just been on my shoulders, and uh, it's uh, it's been it's been. It's been tough, but it's, I've been, I'm proud to say that I have managed so far. That's the amazing thing. I just can't believe it, you know, that I've made it so far. <laughs> yeah, but I would love to have somebody say, oh yeah, you know, you could, you could, here's some, here's some opportunity for you to uh, uh, work and not to worry about that aspect. Mm -hmm. um, and so how has your art practice changed since the pandemic? You said you've been doing these sketches. Yes. So, uh, of, of course, even though my studio is just me uh, and uh, I, I, I could have gone there, but it just does something to your mind where I just felt just just frozen. I just did not want to do anything. So for, for several months, I just didn't even go to the studio. And then I had a student uh, over the summer and uh, I started going because of him and uh, that helped a lot and to, to come up for him to way to get uh, started uh, to do something abstract I came away I came about a way to do that and that kind of made made it for me uh, to start this kind of a, a doodle uh, sketch every day so uh, you know again everything presents a new opportunity so uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's great Thank you so much. And I, we have a comment from our one of our viewers who said this wonderful, moving and beautiful way to express these important issues, Shola. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for that. And thank you for sharing. And we'll come back um, and have a little bit of question and answer again at the end. But um, I want to take the opportunity to welcome anyone who's just joining the program. This is the Cambridge Arts Open Studios virtual program. It's part of a series um, where we have programs 12 to 1 or 3 to 4 on Tuesdays or Saturdays in partnership with CCTV. Um, and today we're, we're presenting the work of Shola Regna and Roz Grunman, who are two of our Open Studios artists. Um, you can find more about them and 
um, you can find their work and uh, work for sale at csartcambridge.com with also the artwork of over 100 other artists in Cambridge. Um, so next, uh, we'll introduce Roz, who's going to share some of her work and talk about her art practice in her studio. So Roz, take it away. I think, I think you're muted, Roz. Am I unmuted now? Okay, good. Hi, everybody. Um, I have no idea if the people who I sent this out to, <laughs> so many people are busy at noon and I tried to get people to know this was going on because I really appreciate what Cambridge does. It's very rich experience for people to um, have a place to show during open studios. And uh, I've done a few, mostly packaging your stuff up and taking it to venues because I live on the edge of Cambridge. And so I remember being in different malls and stuff and meeting people. But um, my own story is that I'm a professional teacher, how I made my living. And my studio is a community studio. Um, it's very unusual to have actually communal space. This is 4,000 square feet here on California Avenue. And I'm in just the front room where I, we worked it out because there's a group of people you talk with, you know, there's about 15 to 20 people and there's a little group and they discuss, you know, how to deal with the clay. So the clay is kept here in the front room. So the dust issue. So that's, that's the kind of thing you have to think about. But it also is that when you get here, somebody is a, there to say, hey, hi, and you see very exciting things going on. Like right next door in this flow space, um, someone's doing a huge installation, hanging from the rafters of all this wire and all this kind of stuff. So it's stimulating, but it isn't as easy to keep all your stuff so there's a lot of storage here, a lot of storage. And so we're in Newton actually, and we were supposed to do the, came, the Newton Open Studio. So I had tried to put my most recent stuff up on what's, you know, CCTV is gonna show a slideshow, but um, the things that are actually on the online for sale stuff with some more recent work. And it has some span, but not this, the kind of span of everything. But I, that's why the slideshow is good to show that span. Do you want to start the slideshow? Yeah, okay. I don't mind because I can tell stories sort of as we go. <laughs> yeah, so here is a couple of um, my favorite things from back in the day when I was at studios, Radcliffe Studio, uh, while I was teaching in the Cambridge school system. I was a history teacher at the Peabody, then went up to the high school. So my love of clay was after grading papers going over to Radcliffe on Concord Avenue, you know, eight o'clock till midnight and learning to throw. But um, I liked deforming and you see something here that's pit fired. So I chose this because I like their relationship and I like trying to get at things being soft. And I felt I could have kept going in that direction. And I tried to, in one summer, try to make all these goblets and go into production. And I learned early on, I could not leave <laughs> and make this huge commitment to becoming a potter with kiln loads and a lot of that kind of thing. Um, so my work has always been sort of done like, it, like this little vase was done at Ghost Ranch where I got to go with my daughter a while back when she was in high school. And we did this, it's a crystalline glaze. So going to do something that's, you, you know, I was amazed that I could throw off the hump a bunch because you have to do all the shapes in a day for the next, because when you're there for a week, you got to kill load and fire by the end of the week and all that kind of stuff. But it was really a wonderful experience to go. 
just like um, some people go up to Haystack. That's where some of this kind of inspiration comes from the ocean. I have a lot of things tucked away in the basement. And I'm at this point of, I don't really know if they'll ever get seen. So sometimes I just want to give things to people so they have a home. And that's what ends up happening because you put them out for selling. Like this guy came when I actually retired because most of the work I did was pastels um, and not clay because of the time concern. But I got involved with going back uh, to clay. And this is actually one of the things I love is um, learning to sculpt at BU's Evergreen program. And, you know, I know I had left throwing way back and I made boxes and I deformed things and I did a lot of other kinds of things, but just getting totally into the sculptural forms that I love with the clay was just wonderful to be back with clay. And so this is a kind of thing that I did before I did the sculpture. These are the big pastels. Um, if I go on a trip, this is in the Southwest, it's probably Arches National Park. And this is, I think, one of many, many, there's tons of charcoals, but lots of pastels. And the pastel feel is great for me, but the shaping and getting these forms is what I, I really, I'm astounded by these things. And I just love being with them. <laughs> And I like, I really like, um, here's, here's one thing that I got to also do was an installation. I went to Israel, a lot of times I come back from someplace and I have to do a lot of work about it. So these are all pomegranates. The only one there in the middle looks a little bit like a pomegranate, but each one is unique. And I like, I had them all fired up their white clay and a beautiful mat, mat, lovely. So there were 40 to show at an open studio, at our studio in Watertown, <laughs> when we were in Watertown, because my group is called Turtle Studios. It started in Somerville, had a little stint in Cambridge, a long time in Watertown, and we traipsed over here to Newton near the Charles River. And so it's hard to um, have these things around a lot. They're wrapped up, but a lot of them, I was part of uh, helping with a fundraiser and I redid them all with color so that they would make money at the, the fundraiser. And it, it's sort of like, but I wanted to show one of the things I kept experimenting with, if you could see this, people get kind of excited because I struggle with glaze a little bit like some other people just have trouble with it. And so this is pomegranate that I did after that stuff where I learned how to rub pastel into the clay. And this does not come off on your hand, thank goodness there are sprays that fix it, you know. But I've done this with, um, after a trip in India, I got very interested in the certain kind of feelings of things that they had that were ritualistic, boxes I did, and they were rubbed with pastel too. And these things can be outside sometimes, but, it's really nice for me to have something that's unique and it means something to me from, you know, being on the land in Israel, volunteering and seeing all this stuff, how it grows. So this is um, just, a, this now is really something I wanted to stay with because along with learning sculpture and clay, I got to learn how to build armatures in, the solidness of clay and its heaviness has issues for me. So I've gone and pushed against that. And this is covered with hog gut and it's a squash. It's not small. It's two and a half feet long. So it's again, it's the blowing up and these are the ridges of it and running the wire through it. But I've done some more things with gut over some other things that are willow and I'm not sure where the, oh, here's the willow. So um, I think on the market, some of the things that I've learned how to do with bending in the willow, um, they're covered in gut in parts 
or paper, rice paper. And there's little things in them that are natural materials and playing with the design. And that was really, I thought I would keep going with that, but now I'm back to clay. So that's what I have a lot back here is the sculptures I've been working on during the pandemic. So if we get back to that slideshow, um, I'm not sure what's next. Oh, this is another thing that I really like. Instead of working, I always had clay and art. I, I created the mini courses in all of them in the junior highs in Cambridge. I just felt on Friday afternoons at the end of the week and my colleagues helped do that kind of thing and everybody did different something artistic. But this is after I was teaching and I was artist in resident at the Haggerty School. And it's again, where you work with the kids about something with the clay and you're teaching sculpture while you're doing it. So it, it wasn't um, easy for them to do like they want, these were supposed to be about themselves, you know, their true self. And so they had to sometimes learn how to do the figure. But over and over again, when I teach sculpture to people, like I've worked with cardboard, a picture of that is also on the online. I find that um, people really learn more when they have their hands on something like that. So anyway, this is, um, I like showing this study, um, the finished piece of this, this is from the India trip, but this is sketching in oil and really trying to keep how to keep it moving and lively. These are, this is a wedding scene in the streets of India. And I think the final piece isn't here. It's um, hanging someplace else, but a lot of my uh, stuff is other places. People have bought it or whatever. But the point is, is how do you keep things alive and moving is very important to me. And that's the challenge in I think every media. So here we are um, right before the pandemic, I think, or maybe this was, now this, this piece that I was talking about is in the background there. It has paper and wax and things like that. So trying to get things up on the wall and feeling lighter. But I'm very interested also in just how much I learned about anatomy doing this. This is um, my grandkids in Israel and they're young. And when, I, when I'm there, I'm just captivated by, of course, their energy and everything that they're doing and moving and stuff like that. So kind of what I said in uh, the statement, I've, I've chosen a, a direction to go of just men's relationships with their kids because I also have a son-in-law and a grandson. And I just wanted to try to work with how that's different than the, the Madonna holding kind of stuff. There's a different kind of energy and I really like everybody moving different ways. So I'm trying to, I learned with this one, you can't see the back, but so much what I love, and you'll get to see when I turn the, the table here, is getting to see sculpture from all around. And that's where the energy comes. Oh, this is just, um, this is for fun because this is showing, I love seeing a show called Prometheus and I did this sculpture and it's just a kick to see it wrapped like that. But that's the actor doing it on stage and working the sketches up. Oh, and here's trying to sell pomegranates at a Christmas sale. So, and there's a cardboard one. So this one was very interesting to learn how much you can do with alternative materials, not just the gut, but especially how inexpensive this is. And I. I taught people and people even got to learn how to make limbs move. I and mean, one woman was a doctor and said, oh, we should have done this kind of stuff while we were in med school. And I said, you know, you should think that way you'd never gotten through med school if you did that. But there's a lot of problem solving where you, I feel I learned a lot about anatomy all the time because I like the human figure. So that's Prometheus when he's done. And, a lot of what I'm dealing with is I do whack with a um, piece of big sticks, you know, hard wood and trying to get patterns and energy 
from my energy to the clay and hold, have the clay hold it. I mean, some things people say, oh, Raj, you love everything smooth. And then like the big garlic, but then I like to see if I'm working now to get this kind of energy through more a texturing of clay that you see. See, I, this is, you know, smooth, 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 but, and it, it was fun to do. And this is um, probably a, the best example of one of the oils I did from being in India. I did a show of about 12 pieces and there's so much uh, learning that goes on about being in another culture to be able to understand. I remember having to repaint it and repaint it so much because it's, it's inconceivable to the left side of our brain or right or whatever it is, how much weight and how high those were. And I, I just, I had to repaint it and repaint it because that needed to be higher to show that, which it was. So I think I got something out of that one. So that's just a sort of an eclectic way of going through things. So there you have 15. And I put a few things up on the walls, but my, I mostly put, um, like I think I put up my oldest pastel of Vermont, I found it. Um, and it's a it's actually a figure on the edge of the pond and it's interesting because it's my husband holding my daughter when she's a baby 35 years ago and i feel i'm i found it and i said this is interesting because this pose working with this intimacy and the, the relationship of father child is what's holding my attention now i mean that's what's going on for me here in the studio Great, thank you for sharing, Roz. Um, we had a comment from one of the um, audience members who said, I love the armature piece. There's an ethereal, organic, fragile aspect to them. Yeah. Would, you consider, consider, uh, would you consider returning to this medium? The textures and potential are intriguing. Yeah, that it's, gut is really exciting. I mean, I, I, was, I had gut to put on these willow pieces and I was gonna keep going that way. Gut, unfortunately, is organic. And if it's in the basement, it'll get moisture and start sagging. If it's up in a radiator room, it'll crack. And I know now I have to learn more about, just the same way I had to learn more about, you have to spray pastel as you go, because I just hate it to go dead. Just the luminosity goes dead. And I've talked to different, and you just have to spray as you go. And it's kind of the same way with the gut to, you know, let it dry. It's a longer process, but it um, is something I would like to do because I think people have done things that like you can put a light inside and it can be functional. And there's a lot of wonderful shapes. This kind of uh, twisted way of working with this, it's chaotic knotting as opposed to people who not for baskets, <laughs> I was shown how to do this. This chaotic knotting is perfect for me. And this would be perfect for, you know, I have pieces that have um, some wax in it. And that's, a, that's another thing that you can do to get some luminosity. But the gut and rice papers is what this will take. It has to be something organic to stay on this. Mm. So, we had another question. Um, what about using handmade paper? Well, handmade papers by and large for this, um, I'm not sure if they're referring to on this. Mm -hmm. I have done pastels on handmade paper. I've done them on what rice paper. What do they mean for the, um, for the armatures? Yeah, these, um, well, inside that big squash is a big wood armature to hold it and to stretch mm -hmm. things over. So I'm not sure if they're saying to lay handmade papers over it because handmade papers tend to be heavier and denser that mm -hmm. I've had an experience with. So if I'm looking for something lighter. On so you that. mentioned the rice paper. Yeah, rice papers, there's wonderful rice papers that are very thin and you can embed little things in them as you're working 
too. Mm -hmm. So there's all little treasures of sticks and berries and other little colors in there. And it's, it's kind of nice to be a little smaller and have my hands around the whole thing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what's happened to me. Have you worked in uh, mache before? Paper mache, you know, when I was a teacher, I also had an opportunity to be a staff developer for the school system and go into classrooms where teachers wanted to learn. And it was always things I had the kids do with their hands to understand the culture more. You know, I'd have them weave things. Or, but I remember doing a lot of paper mache globes <laughs> with their third graders. And that whole connection of learning through your hands and understanding through your hands. But I've wanted to work with plaster here at the studio. I know some people are working with paper mache, a paper clay. Um, and I, I've, I've wrapped it a little bit, but like I never would want to cover that cardboard thing with paper mache. The rawness and the ripping of that cardboard was just so to die for. But I think the thing that I could really end up learning more, maybe if we, I think some of, I think we just, or somebody just ordered a 50 pound bag. <laughs> and that's one of the things that's maybe a hundred pounds. That's what happens here. People share stuff, help each other out. So there's, a, there's three of us now very interested in, in sculpture in this space. And it's really helping us a lot. The COVID makes it so only seven people can be here. Normally this room could have another person over there. A lot of painters here use the walls, not just, not just easels. But, you know, the light is terrific for them and stuff like that. But, you know, it's always having to be cognizant. Of, you know, we have all the drop cloths. We have everything we need. It's just time. But I've always wanted to try and work with plaster over wire. I've done... I've done some plaster over wire, not paper mm -hmm. today. That's great. Um, I want to welcome anyone who's just joining us. This is the Cambridge Arts Open Studios virtual program. Uh, we have artists Roz Grunman and Shola Regna here with us today to talk about their art and their practice. Um, you can also find more about them and their work and buy their work on csartcambridge.com. And there's the work of over 100 other local Cambridge artists there as well. Um, so with the time we have left, I wanted to do a little more Q&A. So if any of the audience members have more questions for either of these great artists, please use the Q&A function and we can make sure that they um, can answer your questions. Um, but when we were getting ready for this program, we talked a little bit about um, being an artist in Cambridge and your experience experiences here in the, in the Boston area with art. So I wonder if um, you could talk a little bit about your your training and, and how you got started. Um, Shola, would you like to start? Sure. Um, I actually uh, uh, was biology major in college and uh, a pre-med and uh, it just uh, felt uh, a little bit not exactly um, what I uh, enjoyed immensely. Uh, the experience was not so great for me. So. I was recommended to go take classes at the art school. And uh, I went there and I uh, took a, a sculpture class and boy, I touched clay and I felt like I found my friend forever and uh, just became hooked <laughs> instantaneously. One of my professors said oh, at the, on, the, on the second year, uh, you had to choose what direction you wanna go, painting or sculpture. And I chose a sculpture and he was uh, kind of, uh, uh, um, mentioned that you know die is cast. Never mind. You can you can uh, you know you can do whatever you want. But you know it's just uh, yeah you've you've given up painting. But really, uh, it 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 it's, it's not to be uh, one or the other. It can be all uh, uh, incorporated in your in your practice. Um, so I I I uh, have a biology uh, um, vantage point where I see things through. Um, that that lens and so it's just uh so rich and so wide you can never ever run out of things to look at to learn and uh to to realize how much you don't know 
Yeah, I think a lot of artists are inspired by nature and by the human form. So a biology degree seems like it would be a great training for, for an artist. And you can, I think you can see that in your work with your interest in genetics and um, the, the liveliness of birds and human figure and that kind of thing. So that's great. Thank you for, for sharing. Um, Roz, could you share a little bit about how you got started? I think I told you I was out in Wisconsin and I had started a school for kids who dropped, we, the, the alternative movement, I was studying the alternative movement. And so a kid wanted to learn to do something with clay. And so I went to the head of uh, the art department at Wisconsin, Madison, Don Wrights, and he said, come on Thursday afternoons, the graduate students are here, they can use the wheel. So these graduate students were teaching these kids that were, you know, there were just a few of them, but I fell in love actually with this guy who was doing slabs. When you mentioned masks, he was casting and he was doing vases from the cast of these face. So I always did that casting with plaster with my students when I started teaching later in Cambridge. But when I came East and I was teaching full time, the Radcliffe Studios allowed me at night to really take my mind off of all that stuff. And that's because what I taught was history and more comp, you know, the front page, let's just, everything under the sun. So it took time for me to find a, a group to start 38 years ago, this particular format. And I basically am self-taught. You know, we hire models here. Um, until I retired, I never took a class. That's, that sculpture class at BU was the first. And I was, Kitty Wales was terrific. Batu was terrific. It was great to have a model and stuff like that. Um, but that was a really, it's, I've been in an environment where people are really teaching themselves a lot. Many of them have some art background and take classes, but it's just that the space and being able to go in full time. I mean, when I was at BU, I was there all the time because I was retired. The kids would go to their classes and they'd say, why don't you become a student? I said, I'm happy as a clam. I'm just here doing these all day long. And the next day, the, the studio was free. I mean, I went there really to learn to do oil painting from, I couldn't afford anymore to frame these huge pastels that I did it from all these women in saris in India. I said, you have a show and they're $500 frames just to show in, you know, five, ten, how much can you do? So I said, I'm going to paint. <laughs> And so I'm painting and I had done some acrylic because we don't have oil at the studio, but I loved working in oil because it mushes in a lot. It mushes a lot like clay. So that piece that I think you saw was an oil, that last one from India. Mm -hmm. But that was something I had to do at learning at BU and do it there. That's great. And had support that semester. I also wanted to ask um, what you both are working on now and if there's anything exciting that you'd like to share about. Um, <laughs> exciting. <laughs> um, yeah, Roz, do you wanna start? Yeah, because these little heads are here. I got it on the wall. These are the little book keys in Israel and I got to be there last October. And this is the way, just the way my son has these squirmy wormies, you know, they're a little older now, but it's the, <laughs> the whole thing of, I'm trying to work on how to, I'm going to have to blow this up, but I just get a really big kick out of going around and trying to figure out how the hell is he holding her <laughs> while she's squirming this, because the other pose I'm also doing, she leans forward. So in the, when I started, I thought I'd do a painting of it and I did a sketch of him being the center and her going this way, you know, multiples inside it, which I may do because I've done that in oil stick way back. But there's something about being able to really see the depth in this and dig it out and bring it out. But I know I got to get it really wet and it's got to be moving almost like wet clay, you know, and then stop. And that's the big thing. Knowing when to stop when you've got it. Mm, yeah. 
This is like my favorite thing is to hang out with these and then just say, okay, they're done. Just don't, I don't want to fuss with them. And I want them not to necessarily be portraits because I've gone in that direction and I'm, I'm more interested in the gesture of a certain person in their walk and their hands. The movement. And, their movement. I mean, yeah. people go back and sit the exact same way they always sit. You know, you get that gesture. So um, we have a couple questions. I want to go to Shola next to talk about what you're working on now. And then we have a couple questions from the audience. Sure. Um, I have uh, uh, realized that I have to uh, go online in a way of uh, reaching to my audience, you know, my, my supporters, my customers, people who've been buying from me and keeping me uh, uh, afloat, afloat. So uh, I've been trying to build myself a new website. I, uh, one that is right now uh, out there is, was done 2010. Uh, so it's like really old. So, and, and to try to build it, rebuild it, uh, uh, I just get really, again, excited about every new thing that I, find and I have to learn more about it and it just that's why it has taken me forever but I'm getting very close to uh, have it all come together so I will have a, a shop I will have uh, also you know you could see the different uh, uh, work that I have done so that's what I've been working on on developing my website that's great yeah. that'll be exciting when that launches so thanks for sharing um, so we had a couple of questions from the audience. One was about storage. Does storage pose barriers and is it possible at your studio? Um, Shola, can you start and then we'll go to Roz? Yeah, just Roz mentioned, I don't know when, that, that this, for sculpture, storage is a big issue. In re really, when you want to make a sculpture, you, you are going to have to deal with the space requirement uh, for it, for its uh, uh, as long as you have it. So it's just, uh, I wish there was some way to make it and then and then give it back to nature so that it would just disappear. But, it, but again, you don't want to like really lose anything that you've done. So uh, yeah, a sculpture is very difficult. You have to have a place to keep them and keep them safely. I have, I have paintings from 1990, uh, oh my God. And uh, they, they've been in my space, but at the same time, uh, uh, they've got, gotten damaged because uh, of not knowing exactly how, how uh, uh, best to hang them and preserve them. So um, things like that, it's uh, um, uh, space issues, just, you know, having to have the space and, and knowing how to, how to uh, put them in storage is a big thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Raz, can you share about storage at your studio? Uh, I mean, I've moved a lot. You've been at Vernon Street straight for 30 years. Yes. So we've had to, we, this is a very movable place. And right now they've just put in places to really have the paintings, pro, you know, properly stacked for people. You know, they've really built a huge moving, because it's such a big space. And I have hear things that were damaged in my basement because I have so much stuff on paper, charcoals and pastels a lot. And because of the Newton Open Studios, I took the task of bringing one of the portfolios here and reworking older damaged things and bringing them back to life and getting those ready. So I've, I learned how to get things shrink wrapped as opposed to just leaving them. I know that they should be under glass and all that other stuff. But the process of choosing what's worth putting it even into a shrink wrap or what to just leave in a portfolio. Because most of the time, all I had time for was pastels, you know, amaryllises, amaryllises, you know, a bunch of roses. Somebody gives you roses for your birthday. Okay, then you do a series of, you know, five different rose bouquets. They're all gone. Thank God they got homes. You know what I mean? You have a show and the orange amaryllis has a home or whatever, but not everything has a home. And you don't, you just have a damp basement is a bit of a problem. But the thing with the clay is I have not done as much as I've wanted to do. I'm just starting to get back into it. And mm -hmm. I mean, I have plates and old things that I did, platters, you know, I, I brought one in to show you. 
I mean, this is the way I used to love to, this is a rhubarb leaf mm -hmm. into a bowl. I mean, I always had a lot of fun at the studio that we were at before there was a kiln, but there isn't one here. So this was made there. And I had a big hump mole. That was a monster hump mole, but the space was big enough for it. And there was an air for drying and this and that. So to make organic-y looking functional wear is fun, but it's hard because that's a fragile piece because I like them thin and stuff like that. So it is like you say, they gotta be bubble wrapped and this and that, and they're in the basement. <laughs> And that's what happens. Yeah. I have a basement. We had, we had another question about where to find uh, you. So social media or websites. I want to share again to anyone listening that you can go to csartcambridge.com to find the contact information for these artists and over 100 other Cambridge artists, as well as their work for sale. Um, but do the two of you have other ways that uh, people can find you that you want to share? Well, I'm on Facebook right now. I'm trying to learn how to do Instagram. People at our studio are trying to start doing the kind of posting that you were doing with the pastels and stuff. Um, I had a student make my uh, website and she's a brilliant and she's gone. And when you don't make it yourself, you can't refurbish it. So that hasn't been up and running for 10 years. This stuff is half gone that's on it. So that's my, like you, I'm sort of, one of the things about technology, my husband says, you don't have to feel bad because it's so fast moving. You can start right now, forget whatever you knew, because I didn't know anything hardly, you're fine. <laughs> it's like just, it's not so incremental, la di da. Yeah. And so, Shola, so Shola, where can people find you? Yes, well, I am on uh, Facebook, Facebook and Instagram. I post uh, a lot on Instagram. My newest work is there. And uh, I have a website, sholeregna.com. Uh, and it is, uh, I'm reachable, I might, uh, you know, by, by uh, email, shole at sholeregna.com. And uh, yeah, I, and I'd be happy to uh, um, coordinate uh, anything that you may want to look at or purchase. Great, thank you. And Roz, you said you had a Facebook page. So is that just, if we search for Roz Grunman on Facebook, would that get you? But there isn't, I'm going to start putting art on. Some of the people here at the studio started doing that. It's kind of fun. And since we don't see each other, people can yak that way. We have friends over at the Waltham Studios. I just put my phone number down on that. I didn't give the email, which I could. We could edit and mm -hmm. add it. For some people. Yeah, so the csartcambridge.com, you can find Roz's phone number on there and I'll add her email address too after this so you can get in touch um, if you'd like to talk more. Does that sound good? Yeah. Good. Um, well, I wanted to thank you both again for taking the time to share with us today. Um, it's really nice since we can't have open studios in person this year to see some of your art and Roz to see your studio and um, have that kind of feeling um, of, of, of a studio visit in a virtual way. We had one more question before I wrap up um, about a professional Facebook page, if you've considered a professional Facebook page. I haven't, but I know people who have two. They have a personal one and a professional one. Mm -hmm. I know that um, I have friends who are photographers that professionally and, that, you know, Having been a person that haven't, hasn't made, I love selling stuff. I want them to have homes. I want them to be out in the world. But I haven't done the hard work of them. Yeah. Well, hopefully that's what the csartcambridge.com site can do. It gives you a platform at least until December 31st for everybody who wants to see your work and learn a little bit about you. Um, so I encourage our viewers to go visit the website and check out the work of these artists and many more. Um, so thank you again for being with thank us you. today. I really appreciate it. And thank you to CCTV. Oh, one more comment. Um, thanks, Regna, for sharing your art. Can see you are not short of inspiration. Love seeing it. And that's from Gunnel. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so great. Thank you, um, everyone. And thank you to CCTV again. This has been Cambridge Arts Open Studios Virtual Program with Roz Grunman and Shola Regna. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.